When do dinosaurs become birds? That's a really good question. In the minds of most people, I guess it's like uh, just a sudden moment that they just like, bloof, became birds. This was a gradual transition that took place over many millions of years. But fossils like Nata Ornis are critical for helping us pinpoint when certain characteristic features that set birds apart from other living animals first evolved. Before now, we had information on what the brain of Archaeopteryx from about 150 million years ago was like. And of course, we know what the brains of modern birds are like. But actually finding a fossil that's evolutionarily intermediate between, between something like Archaeopteryx and living birds, that has been really elusive and has clouded our understanding of how the complex behavioral capabilities and sophisticated brains of modern birds evolved. So we've described these new species of an early bird from the Mesozoic era, the so-called age of dinosaurs. Um, we named it Navaornis STI, and is represented by one of the best preserved skulls of any Mesozoic bird ever found. We need three-dimensional fossils in order to really understand how the anatomy of these animals were. And Navaornis is completely redrawing that. We CT scanned the fossils in Brazil, and then we transferred the files here to Cambridge, and I was reconstructing piece by piece, all the uh, three-dimensionally and digitally, all the different bones of this animal. Once I did this, I assembled all the, uh, all the bones in a reconstruction of how these bones may have looked in the animal when, when it was alive that you can sort of like represent an um, um, internal mold, an internal digital mold of the endocranial cavities. And in birds, but also in mammals, basically the brain in these animals is completely surrounded by the skull. So the internal mold of the skull represents very faithfully the soft brain anatomy. So Nava Ornus shows a combination of features that we associate with living birds, like an expanded cerebrum, which would have supported complex cognition with more archaic features that we might be likely to see in dinosaurs. For instance, uh, the lack of an expanded cerebellum, this portion of the brain that helps coordinate flight in living birds. So fossils like Nava Ornis are absolutely pivotal for helping us understand exactly how and when the features that we associate with modern birds today first came to be. One of the things that we could reconstruct from Navaornis is the balance organ, which is part of the inner ear. Uh, we have the same, the same sort of structure in our skulls. It's believed that the shape of it is related with how agile an animal was, etc. Now, there is a lot of debate about that. In the case of uh, Navaornis, the striking thing is that we found that the balance organ is in shape remarkably similar to modern birds, however, its shape is larger than anything that we know. And by anything, I, I not only mean birds, but I mean anything invertebrates or anything that has a, a balance organ. We don't know yet what this means, might be related with some of the anatomy of other parts of the brain, like the cerebellum, which is unlike anything that modern birds have. Anytime you make one discovery, you're left wanting more. So these questions about our new fossil raise very important new questions about how the complex brain of Nava Ornis actually evolved in the first place. So we'll be looking for animals that are even more distantly related to living birds than Nava Ornis is, but also we'll be looking to fill the gap between Nava Ornis and modern birds to shed details on how the refinement of the modern bird brain actually between Nava Ornis and modern birds came to be. <laughs>